Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to your Southwest Ambulance um, part two of the education program. So this webinar is for nurses that have been recruited to come and work for SWAST. This is part two. Uh, part one is already on the YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about the role itself, just to give you a little bit more uh, content as to what's going to be expected of you. Um, so I'm Carly and I'm the transition lead for the Alliance. I hand over to Laura. Thanks, Carly. My name is Laura Travers. I'm the International Project and Pastoral um, Support Facilitator. So I look after um, you guys after you've had your interviews and you've passed um, with Carly and we look after you um, up until we hand you over to SWAST when you're in country. Brilliant. Thanks, Laura and Cara. Hi Carly, hi Laura, I'm really glad to be doing this again. I'm Cara, I'm a nurse and a midwife and I work for Southwestern Ambulance Service as a nurse, as a triage clinician in the Emergency Operations Centre and I'm also a Learning and Development Officer there as well. Brilliant. And um, so for those of you that have been offered for SWAST already, um, further along the process, you will start to have a lot more contact with Cara. Um, Cara is going to be responsible for looking after you on your arrival. So you will, you will start to develop a relationship with Cara. So we're going to we're going to first of all play you a video about the role, which has been recorded from someone who's already a triage clinician. So, uh, Laura, if you could press play. Thank you. Hi, my name's Julie. I am a qualified nurse midwife and I currently work as a triage clinician within the Emergency Operational Centre, Southwest Ambulance Service. My role uh, contributes to quality care in providing a robust clinical assessment uh, to ensure that each individual gets the most appropriate care in the most appropriate time. So a day in the life of a triage clinician um, is it's very varied. So predominantly we are going to be dealing with the clinical stack. So that would involve looking at the different categories of calls that are waiting, waiting for a response. Also looking at the low acuity calls that are deemed initially as not needing any response. However, through clinical assessments, you know, things change quite significantly and quite quickly. There are lots of different work streams. So sometimes we're not just clinically you know, triaging over the phone. We can be supporting when the calls are coming in initially. We can be supporting the dispatch team as well. So it's a very varied role and no two days are the same. We're a very diverse team, huge, huge clinical experience within each EOC. So there are nurses, there are paramedics, we have trainee specialist uh, practitioners, as well as hub doctors. We have honorary midwives who are in the hub and also we have a large mental health specialist desk. So there's lots of clinical knowledge. Every day is a learning day. I enjoy working for SWAS because it is quite dynamic. It's ever changing. Uh, we are a very busy organisation, so there are lots of different things going on from day to day. I enjoy the team I work with. You know, we are a very close but very experienced clinical team. It's just a very good environment, really. For the clinician's EOC, the shift patterns are really quite variable. There's, there's about eight different shift patterns. There are flexible working. You know, it would be really dependent on what your requirements are. So in my experience, the leadership's um, very supportive. There is an open door policy, you know, regular monthly one-to-ones with my uh, manager sort of open door any issues at all that I feel that I can always go to my my leadership team and discuss. One of the deciding factors for me to come over to the Southwest Ambulance was career progression really. Um, nurses are becoming much more recognised within the ambulance service. Um, our skills are acknowledged and they are very well received. I think it was an area that I personally knew that I could progress with educationally and the training and the audits, which is what I enjoy, you know, the other side of my job is. It's one area that you probably can make a difference, isn't it? So if I can spend 10 minutes assessing a patient, doing a clinical, full, robust clinical assessment and ensure that I've got the most appropriate care for that patient at that time, then, you know, that's you're going to get some satisfaction from that.
Brilliant. Thank you very much, Laura. So it's really nice to actually see um, the clinical environment where some of our nurses are going to be working. It looks like a really nice working environment, actually. Um, so just one question that's come up for me from the video is, am I right in thinking the clinical stack is the list of patients that are phoned in? Yes. Yeah. So that's our calls uh, or incidents, we call them, of patients who are waiting for an ambulance response yeah. or we've received a call to our service for assistance from us. Right. OK. And just thinking, it, it looks like a, a really lovely working environment. So are there facilities there for sort of tea, coffee, lunch break, that sort of thing? Yeah, so one of the great benefits of um, working in the emergency operations centre, as we'll all know, working in a ward, working out on the road, is that uh, it's warm, <laughs> it's dry. Yeah. We, um, SWAS, Southwest Ambulance Service, are really good. They provide us with tea and coffee. We've got coffee machines here. Um, and, you know, you can work allowing get up and go to the toilet whenever you need to, which um, yeah. isn't something we will experience yeah, when we no. are, you know seeing and, and assisting patients face to face but we've got great great facilities here we've got a break room we've also got a quiet room so if you were to have an experience you know do a particularly difficult call there's a quiet room there you can go and take five minutes out if you need to as well excellent yeah it's a very attractive role it's getting even more attractive that's brilliant thank you so Cara I'm going to hand over to you because I know you've uh, worked hard on pulling together a training session um, so I'll hand over to you all right Thank you, Carly. So what we really wanted to do was um, just demonstrate how we actually work. Um, and so one of my colleagues, another member of the learning and development team have done a mock call. Um, so obviously, you know, there's no kind of patient identifiable um, information, but we've used our training screen um, of we call it C3. That's the, the training uh, version of the program that we use to assess you know assess and filter the calls that come into our service so i just wanted to to demonstrate a call um and some of the programs that we use um some of the software that we use some of the tools that we use when we're doing that call so i'm going to share my screen you'll see the manchester triage system tool um, and within that you'll also see some of the other uh, features that we use of that program so the pain ladder sepsis screening and um, I'll also demonstrate the GoodSAM app that we use that's um, an app that allows us to do video consultations with patients so we can see exactly what they're describing um, unfortunately we can't actually show that um, within this call itself but it's just to to familiarize yourself with the, the GoodSAM app because it really aids us when we're we're doing clinical assessments. Um, I'm also going to show you Service Finder, which is um, one of the uh, so some of the software that we use to find out other alternative care providers, other alternative care pathways that are available within a patient's locality. And um, because it might be that that's the more appropriate route for them to access care rather than an emergency ambulance response. So what I'm going to do is um, share that with you now. Oh, can't see your screen. Can't see your screen, Cara. Sorry. It's okay. Just get everything ready. Don't worry. Has that worked? Not yet. That looks good. Yeah. Success. Yes. yes. Right, well, so I'm going to start playing the call now. Am I speaking to Barry Smith? Yes, you are. My name's Cara. I'm a nurse. I work in the ambulance service control room. I'm just calling to discuss what's happening there today following your call to us. I've got some safety questions that I need to ask first. Are you having any difficulty?
difficulty breathing at the moment? No, not at all. And can you confirm is there any bleeding anywhere? No. So what I'd like to do is find out a bit more information, as I said, about what's happened there. Can you confirm your full address, please? Yes, it's number one High Street, viewed in Cornwall. And I've got that as ER 271AA, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And can you confirm your telephone number for me? Yes, it's 01234 56789. Thank you. I'll call you back on that telephone number if we become accidentally disconnected. Can you tell me what's happened there today and why you've called 999? Well, I've fallen over in the garden and I've injured my wrist. Okay, and have you injured yourself in any other way? No, it's just my wrist. And where are you now? I'm sat inside the kitchen. I've managed to get back inside the house. Okay, so you're you're in a warm and safe position at the moment. Yes. Good. So what I'd like to do is go through an assessment with you over the telephone just to make sure that we're getting a full picture of what's happened there today. Is that okay? That'd be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd just like to confirm that your breathing is completely normal for you at the moment. Do you feel short of breath? Do you feel that you're having any breathing difficulties? No, not at all. And confirm for me that there's no open wounds, no bleeding anywhere? No. Can you see yourself in the mirror at the moment, Mrs Smith? I can. Do you? Does your skin look a normal colour? Yes, I look nice and pink. Good. And can you put your hand on your forehead and tell me what temperature is? Oh, no, my skin feels a normal temperature. Good. Does it feel clammy or sweaty? No, it just feels normal. Do you feel dizzy or lightheaded at the moment? No, I don't. And... Um, did you feel dizzy or lightheaded when you got up and walked into the house? No, nothing like that. Good. And do you feel like your heart is beating normally for you at the moment? Yes, it is. So which hand is it that you've injured? It's my right hand. Your right hand. And is it just the hand or the... It's the wrist. It's the lower part of the, of the arm. So what I'd like to do, if that's OK, is a, a video consultation with you so that I can have a look at the wrist. Would you be willing to do that? That'd be lovely, thank you. That'd be fine, thank you. So what I'm going to do is send you a text message. It will ask you to share access to your camera, your location and your microphone. Please say yes to all requests. The video isn't recorded and the link will expire as soon as we end the call. I'm just going to go quiet for a minute whilst I arrange that, Mrs Smith. Thank you. Can you just confirm your telephone number for me again? It's 01234 56789. I've got a text message come through and I've pressed on the link. Perfect. And then you say allow my location and allow the use of the camera. Yes, please. Just click allow to all requests. Lovely. Oh, there I am. Perfect. So if I can just see your wrist. So what I'd like to check now is is there is that wrist a normal colour for you? So if you compare it to your other wrist, your other hand, is it the same colour? Yes, it is. And is it the same temperature? It might be a bit tricky for you. I'm just going to put the phone down while I have a feel. Oh no, they feel the same temperature. That's great. And do you have any numbness or altered sensation in your hand? Uh, no, I can feel and feel and move my fingers normally. Perfect. So what I'd like to ask now is in the last 24 hours, have you had any new numbness anywhere else? No. Any new weakness in the last 24 hours? No. And have you been going to the toilet, opening your bowels and passing urine normally for you in the last 24 hours? Oh, absolutely. Perfect. And as you said, there's no open breaks in the skin, no bleeding anywhere. No, there you are. Are you otherwise unwell at the moment, Mrs Smith? No. Are you on antibiotics or anything? No, I, the only thing I take is... um. Uh, Ramathrol for my blood pressure. I'll just make a note of that. What I'd like you to do is give me a pain score. So zero is no pain and ten is the worst pain you've ever had in your life. What would you score the pain as right now? Oh, I would say 
about a seven if I move it, but about a five if it's still. Okay. And I can see there that you are moving the wrist and the hand somewhat. So you have got some movement there in your fingers. Perfect. And more than 24 hours ago, have you had any new numbness or weakness anywhere? No, I've been fine. Any changes to your bladder or bowel function? No. Oh, good. Do you know to have a bleeding disorder? Oh, no. Do you take any blood thinners? No. So, what I can see there is that there is a, a bend there. Is, is that normal for you? No, I, I, I wouldn't normally have a bend in my wrist like this. How would you describe it? Um, well, it looks deformed. It looks like a dinner fork. Okay. Just making a note of all of that. Okay, so from the information that you've given me, we obviously need to get you checked out and seen and assessed further. What I'm going to do now is have a look at what other services that we've got in your area. So I'm just going to end that video call now. Thank you. Have you got any other past medical history? Do you take any other medications that you've not already told me about, Mrs. Smith? No, I've just got, I've, it's just the blood pressure medic medicines I take. Okay. Just going quiet now whilst I'm getting up that information. There's a minor injury unit not far down the road from you, Mrs. Smith. Do you have access to any other transport? Well, my neighbour will drive me across. So do you think that they'd be able to take you there now? I should think so. They're, I can see their cars parked outside. Have you had any pain relief yet? Oh, no, I didn't want to take any before I spoke to somebody. OK, well, what I'd like you to do is take some paracetamol, unless you've ever been told that you can't take paracetamol. Do you have any access now? Oh, I've got some in the in the bathroom, yes. Perfect. So what I'd like you to do is just take it as prescribed, as it's instructed on the side of the packet. Have you got anything that you can use to support the wrist and the arm whilst you're making your way to the minor injuries unit? Um, I can put it in a sling. Perfect. So if you need to just get your neighbour to help with that, just support the arm gently in a, in a position that's comfortable for you so that we can help prevent any further injury. Take some pain relief. I'm happy for you to eat and drink um, if you feel that you need to before you make your way down to the minor injuries unit. That's absolutely fine. Now, it's very important that if anything was to change or worsen in your condition, Mr Smith, have you got a, a mobile phone that you can bring with you? Yes, because I've just spoken to oh, you on it. Of we have. So what I'd like you to do is bring that with you. If you feel that your condition significantly worsens on the way to the minor injuries unit, so if you start to have difficulty breathing, you feel that you have chest pain, you pass out or lose consciousness, please call us back straight away on 999. I'd also like you to monitor your hand quite closely. So if it starts to look paler or feels colder compared to the other side, you start to notice any lost or altered sensation, if you become short of breath, as I said, if you have any chest pain, please call us back straight away on 999. Do you have any more questions for me, Mrs. No. L? Do you understand everything I've said? No, that's absolutely fine. Thank you very much. I'll go take myself off to Butte to the minor injuries you there. You're very welcome. So I hope that you uh, get it sorted out soon. They'll be able to see you there and deal with you very promptly. So that's the right place for you to go today, Mrs. Smith, because I'll have access to an x ray, etc., if they feel that, that that's what you need. Okay. Are you happy with that plan? Thank you very much. That's great. As I said, if anything changes or worsens, don't hesitate to call us back on 999. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And there it is. No, that was lovely. And I think that, you know, the nurses that are going to be coming over to work for SWAS, they're going to find that really helpful. Um, they've had first sights of some of the assessment tools you've used. So, um, I've made a couple of notes. So there's a, a Manche Manchester triage score. So is that the system that it, that they go on to? Yeah. So that's the clinical decision support tool that we use um, within remote triage. Obviously, there's other tools that are available, but MTS is the one that we use at the moment in SWAST. Right. Yeah. Um, and that just helps us to facilitate, to structure the triage that we perform um, to help us facilitate with our decision making. Obviously, you're still a clinician that's using that 
that tool. So you're still using your clinical knowledge, clinical skills, you know, clinical experience to use that tool to help you to facilitate that decision making um, and make that plan with the patient. Brilliant. So that's MTS, the Manchester Triage uh, Tool or Scoring, Manchester Triage Scoring. It's the Manchester Triage System. System, great. Okay, so that's one for them to remember. And then you, um, as you were talking to the patient on the phone about a pain, you used a pain ladder, which is a pain assessment tool. Um, I'm sure the nurses will be used to a variance on that, dependent on what pain scoring they use. Yeah, and the pain ladder that we use is great because it takes into account the patient's perception of the pain, yeah. um, but also their presentation. So when it comes to their activities of daily living, how impacted are they as well? So it allows us to make that measured decision yeah. um, when we're assessing and scoring the pain. And there was um, a sepsis screening tool and then, um, yeah, the sepsis screening tool. So dependent on the patient and the condition, you would dip in to lots of different assessments tools dependent on their system. Yeah, yeah. So depending on their presentation, different things are relevant. So we've got other functionality within the Manchester Trio system to help us to make that decision um, and assess it. Brilliant. Okay, I think that's been really helpful. Um, A really informative webinar. Thank you, Cara. Oh, it was great. I was really happy to do this. I, I think it helps to just, especially if you've met, potentially not worked in telephone triage before or remote triage, just to get that understanding of exactly how it is that we work and, and how we triage remotely. So I really hope that, you know, anybody who watches this and our candidates that are going to be joining us, that they really find that helpful. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. So I think um, I'm, the next part, so part three in this educational programme with SWAST and the Devon Alliance is um, we'll be talking about their induction and what what will take place when they arrive so they've got a bit of an idea and all of this all of these things that they learn before they arrive they'll find it really helpful and it'll reduce anxieties that they have about moving to a new country and starting a new job um, so it'll really sort of reduce those anxieties so um, we will Laura will be in touch with the SWAS candidates to um, let you know when we when we will be recording number three Great. And thanks again, Cara. Thank you, Laura. Pleasure Cara. to see you and thanks catch up soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.